May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A common strand in our readings today is a different account of human encounter with the divine. In our Old Testament reading from 1 Samuel chapter 3, we hear the story of Samuel who encountered God when he did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. This may appear confusing when it is considered in the light of the knowledge that as a child, Samuel had been dedicated by his parents to the service of God and had in fact grown up within the temple. Does this then mean that through our Samuel's formative years, he had not known the temple as a dwelling of the Most High or observed acts of worship or heard the word of the Lord spoken in the temple? Of course, Samuel's ignorance does not mean that he was not aware of his physical environment or indeed the business of the temple. Rather, what the author of this passage appears to demonstrate was that at the point of his encounter with the divine, Samuel had not known the Lord in any personal way. Neither had the word of the Lord a revelation of his mind and will be made known to him. In other words, God knew Samuel before Samuel knew God. Likewise, in our gospel reading from John, we hear the story of how Jesus first recognized, then called Nathaniel, and how Nathaniel, ignorant of who Jesus was then, asked in return, how do you know me? So it follows then that in both the Old and New Testament accounts, we are presented with encounters with the divine, wherein the Almighty God demonstrates his knowledge of and reveals himself first to humanity. God's interaction with Samuel was particularly dramatic. Set in the middle of the night, young Samuel was unable to decipher who was calling him. He turned again and again to his spiritual parent, Eli, until he was properly guided. Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. As modern Christians, many of us might identify as Samuel, Yet to know the Lord in any personal way and those to whom God's words is yet to be revealed. Like him, we may have grown up in and attended the temple or church regularly or helped in occasions, but have not really had a personal encounter with God. As a result, we may have written ourselves off as unready and unworthy to be called into his service. Perhaps some of us rather identify as Nathaniel, upright and recognizable in our community, yet waiting under the shadows and playing skeptic, until invited by our friends, we go and see for ourselves, and then recognize that God had always known about us. Either way, the underlying message appears to be that in our spiritual unconsciousness, God knows us and is eager to call us into his work of transformation. If only as Samuel, we would listen and be courageous to say, Lord, speak, for your servant is listening. God has a purpose for every one of his creation. In the case of Samuel, that purpose was to orchestrate a new order in Israel, one that would mark a turning point in the history of the Old Testament kingdom of God. This period was described by the biblical scholar B. Dale in Samuel's call to prophetic office as one when there was no vision and the leadership over Israel was 
remarkably corrupt. Yet it was in such periods of darkness and corruption that God was most at work. It was in that same period that he had chosen to reveal himself to the youngest and lowest in the temple and through him to herald a new order. Therefore, the good news we are called to recognize today is how God has, over the years, revealed himself and utilized all sorts of people, regardless of age, gender, knowledge, or indeed any human characterization in his work of transformation. In this season of lay ministry, therefore, it is perhaps worth reminding ourselves, clergy and laity, of the call to this collaborative work with God and how to remain plugged into it. So if Samuel best describes our relationship with God, then we may do well to listen and to be courageous to speak up when required to do so. We may also seek to recognize the value of God's wisdom and spiritual direction that is found in the allies in the temple. The allies amongst us may wish to pay particular attention to how the application of both wisdom and spiritual direction gave force to the Lord's judgment and birth a new dispensation. Both Samuel and Eli, all of us, need to stay alert and to listen up just in case the Lord comes calling in his troubled temple. In the dark and corrupt days of Samuel, God was poised to do something new something that would make both ears of hearers in Israel to tingle. In our troubled and suffering world of today, God is no less determined in transforming lives. Are you ready to join him in that work? Amen. <laughs>